Hi guys, welcome back to Creative Tap. Now in today's tutorial, we're going to jump into After Effects and we're going to look at animating that 1972 Pong game where you've got the paddles each side and the ball bouncing between the two. We're going to look at a few expressions to kind of pull this off to make it look realistic and hopefully we'll just have a good time and create a nice looking animation. So let's go and do that. Let's dive on in. Okay, so this right here is what we're going to be creating today. So if we just take a look at this quick animation, we've got actually quite a few things we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at hold keyframes, we're going to be looking at the echo effect, and we're going to be looking at some interesting wiggle expressions, okay? So let's dive on in. The first thing you are going to need to do is import the Illustrator file, which you can download from the description. So if we go File and Import File, you then need to navigate to the Adobe Illustrator file called Pong and make sure you import as a composition and just click import. Once you've done this you can double click Pong and you'll have your four layers here. Okay, you can, my, now my composition is eight seconds long so you can go to composition and composition settings, make sure you're at 25 frames per second and that your duration is eight seconds. I mean it doesn't matter if it's 10 or 6 um, but I'm going with 8. Um, so just click OK. So the first thing we need to do is we need to animate the position of our ball. So I'm going to get that layer, hit P, and I'm going to move it into starting position just by here. Okay, so ju yeah, just by there. Um, I'm going to select a keyframe. Now, in terms of how I keyframe the position, it's actually going to be a bit of a weird one. All I'm going to do is hold Shift and page down, and I'm just going to go forward about 20 frames because it jumps in tens if you hold Shift and page down. Okay, so I've just gone forward 20 frames. Now I'm going to drag this just to give it a bit of a path. Let's say it comes up and it hits up here. And then I'm going to go forward another 20 frames. So shift and page down. And I'm going to be going in sets of 20 frames each time. Um, so then I'll bring this down to here. So let's say it goes like so. And um, that's where I'm going to move this down a touch. But we're just going to say it comes to here and bounces back off. So. Let's create another keyframe, so shift and page down, another 20 frames, and I'm going to come down here, so it bounces off here, another 20 frames forward, and we're going to give it this movement by here, so it's going to kind of bounce up there, and our little baton will come up. I'm going to go forward, it's just about 10 frames this time, I think, and just because it's a short movement, but we will be roving these keyframes later. If you don't know what that means, just hang about. Then I'm going to go forward another 20 frames, move it back down. I think it would kind of go something like this. Um, something yeah, along the lines of that. And then another 20 frames, move it back up so it bounces up there. Round about there. Another 20. And we're going to go back up. Something along the lines of this. And another 20 frames, back down something like that and just until we get to the end then we're just going to repeat this process okay um, so very very quickly something along the lines of that okay so I'll just move and have it finish in the middle for example right let's have a look and see what happens and what it looks like when we play it back through okay so I'm just going to play this through so you'll notice a few things first of all it goes fast in some areas, goes slow in other areas, and the path it's taken is kind of got, let's slow it down, it's got a little bit of a curve to it. It doesn't like hit the corner suddenly. It's got a little bit of a curve there. If we click the layer, you can see that these, this actually caused a curvy path. So that's not very, that's not very good. You'll see it'll move up here, for example, in a bit of a curve, like a sort of loop. We don't like that. So what we want to do first of all is we want to highlight all by clicking and dragging and just shift click this first one to add it. We want to highlight all of our keyframes. Next thing we want to do is we want to right click and we want to go rove across time. Now what this will do, if I, I'm going to click it, what this will do is it'll average out all of the keyframes 
and you know it was moving slower in some parts and faster in some parts, it averages out so it moves at the same speed consistently. Okay, so you'll notice if I click undo, when I did that, the reason I was just going 20 frames apart is because I knew I'd sort out the speed of it later. Okay, so when I right click and go rove across time, you'll notice the blue dots change their position just to average out. So if we have a look at it now and give it a quick play, it'll be moving at a consistent speed, okay, throughout the whole animation. So that's good, that's one of the problems solved. The next problem we want to solve is we've got the issue that this is got a little bit of a loop to it, you know, all around there. It's not like rigid, okay? So what we want to do is right click and go to keyframe interpolation and we want to change our spatial interpolation to linear and have a look at what happens when I do that. When I do that and click OK, we've now got these corners, okay, so it's very, very rigid. Uh, so we'll bang into corners, bang into the wall, like so, okay. So now if I give this a playback again, you'll notice that it's just banging very, very rigidly. It's not kind of looping around. So we've already solved the speed issue with the rover cross time keyframes, and we've solved the um, interpolation, the spatial interpolation. So it's got a very rigid thing now. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to animate these paddles. So I'm going to do the right panel, first of all. So I'm going to hit P for position, and I'm going to set a keyframe. No, not yet. So I'm going to follow this. So I want him to start moving round about now. So I'll give her a keyframe for position, move forward a bit, and I want him to kind of move into place a little bit early. Imagine if this was a real person playing, they'd probably move into place, into position early enough. So with this sort of 540, I'm just going to bring it down like so. And you'll see now he's in position ready. And I'm just going to bring it down a little bit more after he's passed, just to kind of make it look as if there is a player actually move in that. Okay, then I'm going to come forward to the next point you need to move and I'm going to, even though it's coming back, I'm going to set another keyframe by clicking this icon this time because if I were to move this up, for example, we've got a big movement in between previous keyframe and this, okay, and we don't want that. I want it to stay still between these two, so what we're doing is taking this keyframe and putting another one here. So what happens is between this keyframe and this keyframe, it doesn't actually move anywhere because it's, they've, they've got the same positional value, okay? So I'm gonna move forward just a little bit and I'm gonna move him up a little bit like this and then, where does this thing actually land? I'm gonna move him back down just in time, something like that. And yeah, that's great. And then I'm just gonna move him up just a touch again just to make it look as if somebody's actually controlling this and moving it around okay cool so that's that one done we are going to come back to that but first of all we're going to do the left paddle so hit p for position and i'm going to give it a keyframe just first off and i'm going to, in this meantime i'm actually going to move this one up again just to make it look as if somebody is moving this uh, make it more realistic and i'm going to come to here move it down a bit and where does it land? Lands back up here. So I'm going to have them move in again just in the nick of time. So pull it up here, just add in a little bit of randomness to it we are really and then move it down just a touch again to make it look as if somebody's playing. And I'm going to carry on repeating this process. So just have them move it. I'm going to create another keyframe here with the same values before so it hasn't moved. Come forward a bit and move him down in a nick of time again and there we go now very quickly then i want to have a play through this and and then we'll find some more issues and look how to solve them so looking at the ball we're kind of better on where the ball is now looking at these paddles they are very rigid movements and there's no kind of like we want the small tremor movements to it as well so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to actually smooth out the animation so i'm going to highlight all of the keyframes and i'm going to hit a right click or command click on a Mac, keyframe assistance, easy ease, just to give it a little more, you know, just a little more smoother. So I'm going to do the same for both layers. Right click, easy ease. Let's give it another play. So you'll see that they come to a little bit of a smoother stop each time now, um, but that's still not completely where we want it. We want to add some random movements to these paddles.
So in order to actually wiggle these paddles, um, we actually need to use something called an expression, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right paddle and we want to add an expression to the position, but we've already got keyframes on the position. So what we have to do is hit Control or Command on a Mac, Control Shift C or Command Shift C, or we can just select the layer and go to Layer and right at the bottom, Pre-Compose. Okay, so if I do that, I'm going to name this right paddle and um, uh, we'll call it wiggle okay and if I click OK what you'll notice is this now changes brown and what that means if we double click this it's actually a new composite it's made and it's put it put the layer into a new composition so if we double click it here's our animation just the paddle in here and if we hit U we've got all our animation there okay so what it's like is basically like a folder within here. And if we hit position on this, we've got no data on there now because it's all, if we double click, it's all in here. So it's basically put that in a little folder. And what that means is we can actually add an expression now, a little bit of um, a little bit of code to the position property. So if you alt or option on a keyboard, alt click or option click that stopwatch, what you'll have is you'll have the opportunity to type in some text by here. So I'm going to go with open square bracket, then type in the word position. Have I spelled that correctly? No, I haven't. Position, okay. Then we're going to do open square bracket, zero, close square bracket, comma, and then type in wiggle, which is the type of expression we want to apply. Then open soft brackets, or sort of um, curved brackets. Go, uh, I think, let's think, how many times per second? Um, Type in 4, comma, 90, and then close the soft brackets, and then open square brackets, 1, close square brackets, and close again. So now let's click out, and let's actually see what happens when we play this. Looking at this one by here, what you'll see is we've got a little bit of a wiggle going up and down. What this expression is doing is we're saying only wiggle the um, y-axis. We could be wiggling, like left and right, which would be the X. So we're saying only wiggle on the Y axis. And here's the bit that I want you to kind of understand, the four and the 90. What we're saying there is, don't worry about the rest of it for this tutorial, but what we're saying there is wiggle four times per second by a value of 90 pixels. So we know we're telling it to wiggle in the Y axis, like up and down. We're saying do that four times a second by a value of 90, 90 pixels. So if I stop this and I say, 10 or let's go 20 times a second by a value of 90. Let's see what let's see what happens now when we play it. It's doing it a lot more, okay? So if we for example go um, by 190 and let's do it 10 times a second. So 10 times a second by a value of 190 pixels. Let's have a look now. It's jumping around a lot more. So I think when I was practicing this earlier, I think Four times a second by a value of 90 is pretty, it looks pretty like convincing as if somebody is actually doing this. Okay, so all we need to do now is we need to repeat this step. So I'm going to get my left paddle, remember, Control or Command Shift C. And just make sure when you're in this that you click Move All Attributes into New Composition and click Left Paddle Wiggle and let's just rename that a bit better. Cool, then click OK. All we need to do is hit P on our keyboard and we need to type that expression in there again. But what we can do is we can go back to this previous layer, hit P, and click this drop down so we can see the text. We can copy this, Command or Control C, collapse and Alt or Option click in a Mac on this, key, on this um, stopwatch and paste it in here because it's the exact same expression. And now what will happen is both of them will have this sort of rand a little bit of randomness to it to look as if it is actually somebody controlling it, okay? Final thing we want to do is we want to keyframe this little um, this little ball to give it some color, okay? As as it's kind of as it's traveling. So, I'm going to get a fill effect so from the effects and presets on the right, if you can't find that, just go Window, make sure it's turned on. Um, so drag our fill on there. 
And what we're going to do is every time, see these position keyframes, if you can't see them, just hit P on the keyboard. But these position keyframes, every time this little ball hits either the side or a paddle, we're going to change the colour. Okay? So, first of all, let's go to the first frame and this fill up here, I'm going to change it to start on white. Okay, and then I'm going to set a keyframe for the colour. I'm going to come to the second, the second dot by here because that's when it's bouncing off. And then I'm going to go red and come to the next one. So just use my page down and page up keys just to see where it exactly hits. So I'm going to go change the colour now to blue. And you'll see that we're actually making keyframes in here as well. If you want to see these keyframes more clearly, if you select the layer and hit U, so select the layer, hit U, you'll see key, all the keyframes that are on here. Okay, so I'm just going to change the colour again as it bounces off the side by here. So I'm going to go colour and let's go light blue. Let's move forward to this next position keyframe and go to green. Let's go to the next one where it bounces off there at the top and go yellow. Next one and you basically you know what I'm going to say. It's rinsing and repeating all these steps. So I think by here I'll come back to white and I'll start the colour cycle again. So we go back to red and then I think the next one was blue, wasn't it? So yeah, blue and then two more. We've got a light blue and finish off with a green. Okay, so the issue we're going to have is let's let's give it a play. Uh, or let, let's, this is shown down here by the colour thing. What you'll notice is it starts off white and before we get to red it starts changing pink and then more into red and then before it gets to proper blue it's going to go purple first. So it's basically forever changing colour and we only want it to change colour as it hits the side. So we need hold keyframes for this. So if I select all of these keyframes by clicking and dragging and just shift select that first one because I missed it if you right click and go to toggle hold keyframe, you'll now see that this change only happens. It's white, it's white, it's white, and then it's red. It only happens as it hits. Okay, so let's give that a little bit of a quick play. And you'll see the color only changes now as it actually hits the paddles or the side. Excellent. So finally, we want to add what's called an echo onto this. And we need to pre-compose this pong ball like we did with the two paddles. To do that. So if we hit Control Shift and C or Command Shift and C with the layer selected, it'll say um, move click move all attributes into new composition and we'll call ping no, it's not ping pong, it's just pong. <laughs> pong ball echo. Okay. And click OK. And now we can go to our effects and presets, get the echo effect, click and drag it on. And what you'll notice is number of echoes, we can, we can basically give it a tail. So I'm going to click number of echoes to five. The time seconds bit at the top, if you increase this, it'll basically echo. If we change this to one, it'll echo what it was one second ago. And that's, that's not great. What we want, as I tried this earlier, a value of 0 0.2 seconds. So these five echoes will be from unknowns, 0 0.02, okay? 0.02, okay, so it gives us a closer trail. And you know, if you would scale this up, you'll see they get further and further away. But 0.02 I'm putting up there. And then the decay, I'm changing all the way down to about 0 0.8, and basically it decays, then it gets further away. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go for 0.6. Okay, so basically what we finally got is, um, I think we need to go minus actually, on this 0.2. I messed it up, it's kind of doing it the wrong way. So if you go back to this and just go minus 0.2 and then come back to the beginning, what we've now got is we've got a nice little trail behind the ball. So we've used rover cross keyframes, we've used hold keyframes, we've used some wiggle expressions and we've also used a couple of effects in this. So I hope this helped you guys, I hope you learned a few things, and hopefully I'll see you in a future video tutorial.